So now we get to slavery. As in most world societies in the 1400s, the institution of slavery was a traditional element in African kingdoms and chiefdoms. Captives were usually acquired through war or as payment of debts and were usually enslaved for a period of time, sometimes even for life. However, enslaved captives often gained positions in the societies that had captured them, and their children were generally born free. By the third generation, the grandchildren of slaves were usually accepted as full members of the societies in which they lived. African traders, however, were willing to include human cargo in their commerce with the Portuguese and other Europeans, and this changed the nature of slavery. The trade in enslaved people, especially from Eastern Europe, and you might notice that the root of the term slave comes from the word for Slav. This had been important in many parts of the continent, even into the 1400s. We've seen that in the Ottoman Empire, the Janissaries were Eastern European captives who were trained into this elite military corps. The thriving economies of all of the Islamic empires, from Spain through Persia, also created a demand for enslaved people from Europe. And the Vikings of Northern Europe sold captives from Britain into the Middle East, as did the Frankish kings of Western and Central Europe, who enslaved prisoners of war from among the Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe, as had the Romans before them. Although the demand for enslaved labor was less in Europe than in the more economically developed Muslim worlds, some European slaves certainly served owners in the fiefdoms of Western Europe. The human cargo brought to Europe from Africa by the Portuguese in the 1400s, however, became much more highly favored than that of Eastern Europe. Not only were the dark-skinned people more exotic for service in the royal courts, but they also couldn't escape by simply blending into the local population. One can easily imagine how this would lead to ideas of superior and inferior races. Within a few generations, slave-owning whites could consider blacks to be only suited for enslavement. However, what made the African slave trade so lucrative by the 1500s and all the way to the beginning of the 1800s was not the demand for labor in Europe but rather on sugar plantations on the islands of the Atlantic and later in Brazil and in the Caribbean, as we'll see. The vast majority of the enslaved from Africa were used as forced labor in the back-breaking cultivation and processing of sugarcane. Portuguese trade with Sub-Saharan Africa coincided with the discovery that sugarcane grew well on the eastern Atlantic islands off the African coast that were now controlled by the Portuguese and the Spanish in the mid-1400s. Sugarcane itself was first developed in the archipelagos of Southeast Asia. Arab traders brought the plant to the Middle East, where Europeans discovered sugar during the First Crusade and developed a taste for it through their commerce with the region. Sugar was at first considered an exotic medicinal but once the Portuguese and Spanish began cultivating cane on the Madeiras and the Canary Islands, European addiction to sugar soon began, replacing honey as the region's main sweetener. Eventually, more than two-thirds of all enslaved Africans in the Western Hemisphere were involved in cultivating and harvesting and processing sugarcane in Brazil and in the Caribbean. Sugar was such a lucrative cash crop for plantation owners that they would import enslaved Africans, work them to death in three to five years, and then bring in more. And we'll examine this history more in a later chapter. But that is all for now. So a couple of questions before we conclude. Firstly, how was this slave trade practiced by the Portuguese and then by the Spanish different from other earlier types of unfree labor? Secondly, how significant was the European interest in sugar to the growth of slavery in the Atlantic world? As we continue, of course, we'll return to many of these topics. But that is all for this chapter, so I hope people found that interesting. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again next time.